All right, today in the shop, we have a Briggs & Stratton, a Vanguard motor, six and a half horsepower, and we are gonna remove the ignition coil. So before we get started, this is basically one, uh, a, a junk one that I have apart so you can see exactly where your ignition coil is located. All right, here's your ignition coil here, which is resting on the flywheel, you can see, with the two bolts holding it on, and the you'll have a wire on the bottom, it, uh, the bottom of it that actually unplugs, and the wire that goes to the spark plug does run out behind this little groove in your carburetor plate back here so this carburetor is gonna have to come off uh, so that you can fish this back through when we get the uh, ignition coil out now over here we have the actual one with the problem and I'm gonna show you how to get to that ignition coil if you look closely on your uh, shroud here you're gonna have a hex head plus you can also put a socket on there it's an eight millimeter you're gonna have one there one there come over here you have one there and if you look up under the gas tank straight back there let me try to zoom in you're gonna have another so you're gonna need a uh, definitely gonna need an extension to get into that one so we're gonna go ahead and we're going to remove those first all right now that those are removed want to remove this now be careful because if you look up here you can see you have a lot of linkage running across here so you don't want to just yank this out and uh, destroy or bend to break that linkage. So what you wanna do is actually pull on it a little bit and you wanna tilt this on an angle. Tilt it on an angle to get it, because there is a top tab up there you wanna get underneath of that linkage in order to pull this out of there like that. See that top tab there with the bolt? That would have been hitting your linkage. So you need to angle it. You need to angle it like that to pull it out under the linkage. Now I want to take note, and this is where you should also, if you've never done these before, okay, this has to be set a certain way. So you're going to need one of these little, one of these little shim kits here, all right, it has all the different sizes in them. I'm going to take the smallest size in this set, and I just want to show you now, you can actually slide that in. There's a little bit of friction, but not much. So when you're putting that back on, you want to make sure that you have that little bit of play underneath that coil you definitely don't want it too tight or you're going to destroy it see how i can just barely slide that around in there that's what you want all right so putting it back on make sure that you uh i mean you could use a, a business card or a really really thin credit card or whatever too um but that's definitely gonna come into play later on now we're gonna take these off the ignition coil with two bolts you're gonna need a 9 30 second socket i'm gonna go ahead and remove that now Okay, I got our two bolts out of there. Now on the bottom of the ignition coil, you're going to have a wire that's plugged in. You want to pull down on it ah, like that. And you just want to disconnect that wire there. All right, now this is pretty much going to be suspended from the actual wire that goes to your spark plug. Now that's going up and we'll unplug our spark plug here. Now this... You're going to need to, uh, and it may vary according to different models, but I'm going to need to take this air cleaner off and probably loosen up this carburetor because our wire does run behind the carburetor up and into the spark plug. So to take this uh, air filter off, we're going to have two nuts right here on each side. So we'll go ahead and take those off next. And these are going to be a 10 millimeter. All right, those two were out. Now you want to come up here and you're going to have another 10 millimeter right here. All right, now if that one's removed, you should be able to slide this out. Now, there is going to be a carburetor gasket that may fall down on the ground here, but you should be able to slide this off. Come on, like that. All right, and there's our, our gasket here. So if it's not dangling there, look on the ground because it probably fell down. Now that that's out of the way, you can see they had this rigged up. There's a zip tie holding this uh, spark plug wire on there. And you can see the wire is fed up through there. That's not actually done right. Somebody did a coil on this before. That actually is supposed to run. Let me go around the machine. I'll show you. I'll show you on this uh, one we have a part here already. It's a lot easier to get the camera here. Now, if you look behind your carburetor, let me move this light. There's a, uh, here's a carburetor plate here. Okay, this big plastic plate. And see that groove? 
that's where that ignition coil wire is supposed to run out of and up over here i don't know why they had it running to the top but this is the wrong way okay so what we need to do is we need to get this carburetor to pull forward so that we're able to get behind that plate there and put our wire in correctly so the next thing you're going to do is get a 5 30 second socket and you're going to put it right on the end of this carburetor stud here there we go and you're going to loosen these up we're going to try not to take the whole carburetor off just to get enough of a gap back there there we go they're loose i'm going to back these out a little bit these nuts are on here because when i took the air filter off i just put these nuts back on so i didn't lose them um try to turn these studs out by hand and it'll start giving see it gives you a little play in the carburetor but we're probably going to need to take these studs all the way out all right i got these studs backed all the way out now you'll be able to pull on your carburetor here and let me try to come around the other side of this motor here uh, all right i can pull on this now and here's our i need some light in here i'm in real tight quarters here All right, here is our plate right there. All right, now that our carburetor is loose, we can feed our wire behind there. And the plate fell out. This is what it looks like, okay? So when it's mounted to the carburetor, your wire is coming behind this and through that groove. All right, and that's how it, it, you're going to have to feed it. This may fall out on you once you remove these carburetor studs here All right. so what we're gonna do first is actually this is a used coil but we know it's good it came off of that junk motor over there uh, the next step would be I would go ahead and make sure that you know the piece where uh, you disconnected your wire at the bottom of the coil make sure that that's at the bottom but let's go ahead and feed our coil back up in here and we're going to hand tighten those bolts because remember earlier I showed you we're going to have to get that little metal shim in there and make sure we have the right separation between the coil and the flywheel. All right, so we're going to go ahead and hand, hand tighten those bolts in there. All right, so I got my two bolts hand tight only in there and I stuck my shim up underneath of each of them as you can see. Okay, um, so we want to be able to push down on this a little bit. All right, and just make sure we have that little bit of play there. All right, and again, I'm using the smallest shim that comes on these sets. So you don't want to have too much of a gap because that's going to interfere with your spark and you definitely don't want it too tight. All right, so right there, we're pretty much good. Now I'm going to have to stop the camera and tighten these because you want to keep a little bit of pressure on this as you're tightening them. Because if you don't, when you go to tighten that, this is just going to come out of whack. Okay, so definitely keep one hand on it, not pushing real hard, just making sure there's a little bit of pressure still on this shim. You can see it came out there. And uh, tighten them up. And then you should still be able to slide this shim out of there after you tighten them up. And this might be a little difficult to see, but I'm keeping a little bit of pressure on the ignition coil. And I'm going to tighten it down. Don't go crazy, real, you know, really moving this really fast. Just go nice, get it nice and snug. We don't want the coil to shift at all and mess up our spacing here. All right, they're pretty tight there. And I still have movement in my shim here. Now I can pull that out, okay? And I can proceed to go ahead and just crank down on these a little bit tighter, but be careful because these will snap inside of the block. All right, it's nice and tight and I'm able to Put this under there with a little bit of friction again. All right, and let's do the other side. Okay, so that's good. It's nice and tight. Now is where we're gonna run our wire. Actually, we can reconnect our bottom wire. Let me turn some light on here. We can reconnect our bottom wire up there. There we go. And now we'll finish running this wire behind the carburetor. All right, so we have our wire coming behind our carburetor plate here, and you want to slide your carburetor plate up, back up there, okay, so that your wire is right there in that groove. 
all right and then you're going to proceed to line up your carburetor and those stud bolts while you're holding this in place and uh go ahead and screw those stud bolts back in there just keep your hand on the bottom of that carburetor plate back here and you're going to need to be able to look down behind the carburetor and just make sure that, that plate doesn't come out of alignment thread them in okay they're nice and tight our plate is lined up our coil wire is coming out of the groove now we can take our socket and go ahead and tighten these uh drive these studs all the way in all right our studs are all the way back in our gasket is still there you can take your ignition coil wire now and put it back on the spark plug like so and now we can go ahead and uh i would say at this point let's put the uh the shroud back on because that can get you know it's easier to see with this air filter assembly off so we're going to go ahead and put the shroud back on first all right now be careful putting this shroud back on remember when we took it off we had to angle it to get it under all these little springs and linkage under here if you don't angle it putting it back in you're gonna you're gonna push one of these springs off or you're gonna bend something and you're actually gonna bolt this on with one of them being compressed against your shroud so be Pay attention to everything up here as you're putting this back in and make sure you don't have anything caught in the shroud. All right, so I got this up there. I'm going to go ahead and we're going to put those, uh, those bolts back in. All right, we're going to go ahead and slide our uh, air filter on now. Uh, I forgot to mention this earlier when we took the air filter off. Your little breather hose here that actually mounts onto the, uh, the back of your air filter assembly here. So definitely make sure that you uh, remember to hook that back up too. All right, everything is tight and we move this to the on position. Put my foot on here to secure this thing. And that's how you take out an ignition coil and put it back in. Hopefully this helped. Please guys hit subscribe below. Give me a like and I'll see you next time.